Hi, I'm David Putz, and I'm a volunteer with Preservation Houston. I'm standing here with Jim Parsons, Programs Director for Preservation Houston. We've temporarily suspended our architectural walk program, but we're still advocating and educating Houstonians about our historical neighborhoods, architecture, and places that make the Bayou City so special. And until we can start offering in-person tours again, we're going to be doing a series of video tours looking at interesting historical neighborhoods and places around the city. That's what brings us to the corner of Westheimer and Taft here in the Montrose area. This is the first in a seven-part series looking at interesting places along Lower Westheimer. This is not an area we'd typically be able to do a walking tour in because of traffic and noise, but this way you get to explore some of the interesting buildings on Westheimer without even leaving your house. So let's get started. The intersection of Westheimer and Taft was once the western edge of Avondale, one of the suburban neighborhoods developed just after the turn of the 20th century at what was then the edge of town. Avondale was named after the hometown of William Shakespeare, and when the neighborhood opened in 1907, this stretch of Westheimer was called Hathaway, the maiden name of Shakespeare's wife, Anne. Avondale was filled with large fashionable houses occupied by people like Ross Sterling, one of the founders of Humble Oil, who would later become governor of Texas. A lot of historic homes still exist on other streets in the neighborhood, but this stretch of Westheimer turned commercial after Avondale's deed restrictions expired in the 1930s, and many of the old homes along here are gone now. Fortunately, though, there are several examples of Westheimer's early architecture around us, and we don't have to go far to see them. The house behind me was built in 1921 for C.A. Nichols, a realtor and a newspaper man. His line of work was pretty typical for the early residents of Avondale. The homeowners here included merchants, lawyers, stockbrokers, and engineers. The Nichols house still has its original architectural details, including decorative woodwork you see in the three gables. That detailing might have been a nod to a large Engler-style home that used to stand across the street. Notice the wide front porch was enclosed with plate glass. Front porches were common in Houston in the days before air conditioning, but a lot of people later partially or fully enclosed their porches to gain some extra square footage. Over time, the Nichols House has housed a variety of different businesses. Today it's a chiropractic office for pets. The house across the street is another example of the large homes that used to stand along this stretch of Westheimer. It was built in 1914 for attorney and judge C.A. Teagle. And even though this house has also had its porch enclosed, you can still see its basic four-square shape. Four-square homes were all about simplicity. They were two stories, usually with four rooms per floor. You can find four-square houses in a lot of older Houston neighborhoods, and there are several right around here. Like its neighbors, the Teagle House had quite a few commercial tenants over the years, including a piano studio, an interior design office, an antique gallery, and the Refuge, a ministry of First Presbyterian Church that dealt with homeless Montrose youth. Just because a house is a four square doesn't mean it needs to be simple. This house was built in 1913 for realtor J.R. Marmion, and it shows how craftsman style and prairie style detailing can be incorporated to create an architecturally distinctive home. You've probably heard about the Craftsman and Prairie architectural styles. The Craftsman style was meant to showcase simplicity in form and honesty in construction. Exposed beams and chunky brackets were a hallmark of the style. Prairie architecture emphasized simple horizontal lines. You can see that in this home's wide overhanging eaves, broad front porch, and plain stucco walls. The half timbering above the porch and in the dormer are English touches. They might have been subtle references to Avondale's Shakespearean vibe or cues to the architecture of nearby houses. Aside from great houses, there were a few other things that made Avondale a place Houstonians wanted to live. To keep utility and gas lines out of the way and to provide easy access to garages and for garbage and delivery trucks, the neighborhood included alleys, which are pretty rare in Houston. Several of those alleys still exist and are still in use today. Another convenience for Avondale residents was streetcar access. That was important in the days before cars were common in Houston. A streetcar line ran south from downtown along Louisiana Street, turned west on Fairview, and then headed south along Taft toward the Montrose neighborhood. The Montrose streetcar line was converted to a bus line in 1936, and now there's little evidence that the streetcar tracks ever came this way. Avondale also had something unique, red concrete sidewalks. They were designed to cut down on glare so that they would be more pleasant to walk on. Now you're not going to find any red sidewalks on Westheimer, but you can easily spot patches of old and new red tinted concrete elsewhere in the neighborhood, like here at the corner of Avondale and Mason. 
That's all for this segment of our Lower Westheimer video tour, but be sure and keep an eye out for the next video where we're going to explore the area around Westheimer and Crocker, a few blocks west of here. You can find links to all our video tours at our website, preservationhouston.org. You can also visit our website, preservationhouston.org, to learn more about what we do and support our work by becoming a member. You can also follow us on social media for extra content about Houston history and architecture. Thanks.